let's follow me to get to know about iodine. Iodine is a mineral found in some foods and is added to some types of salt. The body needs iodine to make thyroid hormones. These hormones control the body's metabolism. The body also needs thyroid hormones for proper bone and brain development during pregnancy and infancy. Iodine is found naturally in some foods and is also added to salt that is labeled as iodase. Seaweeds such as kelp, nori, and wakame is one of the best food sources of iodine. Fish such as cod, tuna, and shrimp. Dairy products such as milk, yogurt, cheese, and eggs is also good sources of iodine. In dietary supplements, iodine is often present as potassium iodide or sodium iodide. Supplements containing kelp, a seaweed that contains iodine, are also available. Many multivitamin mineral supplements contain iodine, often at a dose of 150 micrograms. So how much iodine do we need? The amount of iodine we need each day depends on your age and listed in micrograms. Iodine needs are divided into eight stages of life, where the smallest requirement is for children aged 1 to 8 years, which is around 90 micrograms. Teenagers and adults both need 150 micrograms. Meanwhile, breastfeeding mothers need the most iodine, which is around 290 micrograms. What happens if I don't get enough iodine? If a person's iodine intake falls below approximately 10 to 20 micrograms each day can occur hypothyroidism, a condition that is frequently accompanied by goiter, the earliest clinical sign of iodine deficiency. In pregnant women, iodine deficiency can cause major neurodevelopmental deficits and growth retardation in the fetus, as well as miscarriage and stillbirth. Chronic, severe iodine deficiency in utero causes cretinism, a condition characterized by intellectual disability Deaf mutism, motor spasticity, stunted growth, delayed sexual maturation, and other physical and neurological abnormalities. Can iodine be harmful? Of course, yes. If you get too much, getting high levels of iodine can cause goiter, thyroid gland inflammation, and thyroid cancer. Getting a very large dose of iodine can cause burning of the mouth, throat, and stomach. Fever, stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weak pulse, and also coma. This following groups are among those most likely to have inadequate iodine status. People who do not use iodized salt. The use of iodized salt is the most widely used strategy to control iodine deficiency. Pregnant women. During pregnancy, the recommended dietary allowances for iodine increases from 150 to 220 micrograms per day. Vegans and people who eat few or no dairy products, seafood, and eggs. Seafood, eggs, milk, and milk products are among the best sources of iodine, and others who consume no or minimal amounts of these foods might not obtain sufficient amounts of iodine. People living in regions with iodine-deficient soils. Iodine-deficient soils produce crops that have low iodine levels. People living in these areas are at risk of iodine deficiency unless they consume iodized salt or foods produced outside the iodine deficient area. People with marginal iodine status who eat foods containing goitrogens. Consumption of foods that contain goitrogens, substances that interfere with the uptake of iodine in the thyroid, can exacerbate iodine deficiency. Foods high in goitrogens include soy, cassava, and cruciferous vegetables, such as cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. Due to its important role in fetal and infant development and thyroid hormone production, iodine is a critical nutrient for proper health at all life stages. Fetal and infant development, iodine sufficiency during pregnancy is extremely important for proper fetal development. During early pregnancy, when fetal thyroid gland development is incomplete, the fetus depends entirely on maternal T4 or thyroxine and, therefore, on maternal iodine intake. Cognitive function during childhood. These findings suggest that correcting mild iodine deficiency in children could improve certain components of cognition. Additional research is required to fully understand the effects of mild iodine deficiency and iodine supplementation on cognitive function. You arrived at your destination. Thank you. See you next time.